Hi, this is Doug Schneider. Welcome back. Today I want to do more or less a follow-up to the voltage and current video I made with Dominic Pupart of Sim Audio. It showed me that people are really interested in the technical aspects of power amplifiers. But what this video is focused on is building a great sounding system. And it's squarely focused on those people who are on an upgrade path with their stereo system, either at the beginning or somewhere in the middle. And it revolves around advice I got more than 30 years ago that I think is still really good advice about how to end up with the best sounding system. But the advice I'm going to give you might seem controversial or questionable. And the reason some might find it odd is because it's generally accepted that when you're making component changes, the biggest differences are going to come with the transducers. The transducers in an audio system being the speakers because of the speaker drivers, a turntable because of the cartridge. A transducer converts one type of energy into another. The cartridge converts the mechanical movement of the stylus into an electrical signal. The speaker converts the electrical signal into the movement of the driver, which gives you the acoustic output of what you hear. And when you do those conversions, they're fraught with difficulty. So you get a lot of problems and a lot of differences. But here's the thing. The core piece of advice I'm going to give you isn't about the loudspeakers directly or the turntable. It's about the loudspeakers indirectly, but through another component. And that is, in your journey, get the best sounding, most powerful amplifier you can get up front. Even if it means foregoing the best speakers you can get at the beginning. And remember, this is for people on an upgrade path. And why am I giving that advice and why did somebody give it to me? Because if you're like most people and you're on that upgrade journey... You're going to change your speakers a lot because they're going to give you the biggest bang for the buck in terms of sound changes. And you might go from little ones to big ones to different topologies, whatever. And the last thing you want to have to do when you change your speakers is change your amplifier too because you've got an amplifier that can't drive them properly. You want a rock solid centerpiece to your stereo system that can live through countless loudspeaker changes. So what does a rock solid centerpiece look like? Likely not a tube amp, at least a tube output stage. That's because tubes generally don't deliver high enough power and they don't do well into low impedances. You're looking for a solid state amplifier of varying topology, class A, class AB, class D, class G, class H, class whatever. High enough power with rock solid stability into lower impedances. So let's talk about power output first. What I like to see, 200 to 300 watts into 8 ohms from either an integrated amplifier or, of course, a separate power amplifier. Years ago, I wouldn't have incorporated integrated amplifiers, but today there are many outstanding integrated amplifiers that will deliver upwards around 300 watts per channel that can easily drive most loudspeakers to very high volume levels. So they should be included too. But what you also want to see is significantly more power as you go from 8 ohms to 4 ohms, and then more power again as you go from 4 ohms to 2 ohms. There's this whole doubling of amplifier power as you have the impedance, and in theory, that's nice. But in reality, you can't get a perfect doubling, and I might do a video in the future about that. But what you want to see is increased power from the amplifier as the load goes again lower in impedance but you also want stability and how do you know that well that's not easy to tell if you're not a design engineer or highly technical and you don't have the amp on the test bench but there are some things you can go on in our measurements which are done by diego estan in our lab which i believe are the best measurements any hi-fi magazine in the world is producing because of how exhaustive they are Obviously, Diego plots power output into 8 and 4 ohms, but he also makes distortion plots into loads of 8 ohms, 4 ohms, 2 ohms, and loudspeakers. A three-way loudspeaker and a two-way loudspeaker. And what you don't want to see is the distortion skyrocketing as the impedance is dropping. It's normal to see an increase in distortion as you go from 8 ohms to 4 ohms, and then an increase again as you go to 2 ohms, 
But what you don't want to see is a really significant increase as the impedance goes down. Because what that generally means, if you see that significant increase, is that although the amplifier might be delivering sufficient power, it's probably struggling to do so. And there are many other things to look at in his measurements as well. Too many to describe here, but suffice it to say, you want a sufficiently powerful amplifier. Like I said, 200 watts to 300 watts per channel into 8 ohms with increased power output as you move to 4 ohms and then 2 ohms again with distortion that's under control. But could you go even higher powered? 4, 5, 600 watts? Yeah, sure. If you find an amplifier that's really good sounding and you really like it, but I don't think it's necessary to do so. There are a few reasons. One is that to get just a 3 dB increase in output level from a loudspeaker, you have to double amplifier power. So if you go from 300 watts to a whopping 600 watts, you're just getting 3 dB more output. That's not much. Furthermore, even with lowish sensitivity speakers, 300 watts is more than sufficient to get them up to really high volume level. And then there's this. These days, I'm seeing an abundance of integrated amplifiers and power amplifiers at about 300 watts per channel into 8 ohms, and in hi-fi terms, very well priced. It seems to be like a sweet spot of amplifiers these days. So I think that's another good reason to cap it off in around 300 watts. So in closing, I want to say some people might find my advice questionable or controversial because indeed transducers do make the biggest difference. Again, the turntable, its cartridge, and the loudspeakers because of the drivers. Yes, biggest bang for the buck there when it comes to changes. But what you want is to be able to upgrade those things without upgrading everything else. Get that rock-solid centerpiece in your system, the anchor. That's the amplifier. I hope that helped. Thank you for watching.